Nine of America's greatest national monuments to visit. There are many incredible places to see in America, and a lot of them are only a stone throws away from our backyard. The United States is peppered with historical landmarks, memorials, and monuments alike, and millions of people visit them every single year to experience the majesty that these places have to offer. We've compiled a list of just a tiny portion of some of the neater monuments there are to explore, so get ready to be inspired by nine of America's greatest national monuments to visit. Number 9. White Sands National Monument This is a cool destination found in Otero County in New Mexico, and it's 4,235 feet above sea level in Tolerone. Basin. It's made up of white sand dunes made of gypsum crystals and it's only the southern part of a 275 square mile field of such dunes. The entire dune is the largest gypsum dune field of its kind on the planet Earth. Tourists can do all sorts of things at the White Sands National Monument including bicycling, hiking, camping, horseback riding, sledding, and much more. The monument can be driven through on an eight mile scenic drive that takes you through the heart of the gypsum dune fields and takes you about roughly 45 minutes. Admission to the monument currently stands at $3 per person and we'd say that that's a pretty low price for such an incredible experience. An average of 500,000 people flock to enjoy all of this fantastic location has to offer each year. And the monument is treasured by many as one of the best that America has to offer. Number eight, Castle Clinton. Most have heard of Ellis Island, but not everyone is familiar with its predecessor, Castle Clinton, which was previously known as Castle Garden. This monument was America's first immigration station and was used by more than 8 million people between 1855 and 1890. Visitors can find Castle Clinton in Battery Park in Manhattan, New York City, and can expect to enjoy outdoor activities only considering the building itself has an open air construction. Although those activities here are limited to a museum and a ranger guided tour, many stories and displays of New York's colorful history are to be found. The monument boasts more than 4.5 million visitors a year, making it one of the most visited national monuments on this list. Number 7. Fort McHenry National Monument This monument is chock full of history and led to the development of the national anthem. Fort McHenry is a historical American coastal pentagon bastion fort located in Baltimore, Maryland, built in 1798 and was actively used through both world wars. It's most well known for its role played in the War of 1812 when the British Navy attacked Baltimore Harbor from the Chesapeake Bay and Fort McHenry successfully defended it. The sight of a large garrison flag signaling victory in the Battle of Baltimore inspired Francis Scott Key to pen the poem called Defense of Fort McHenry. The poem was later sung to the tune to Acreon in Heaven and became the Star Spangled Banner, the United States National Anthem. Tourists can check out the Visitor Center, museums, the Junior Officers Quarters, and the Barracks which all include several smaller exhibits within the themselves. Visitors can also help a ranger change the flag at the fort, take tours either guided or self-guided, and kids can participate in the Junior Ranger program to help them explore and learn about the fort and earn a Junior Ranger badge and certificate. Downtown Baltimore is only a 10-15 to 15 minute drive away, so the location of this monument is ideal. There's a lot of fun things to do for the entire family at Fort McHenry National Monument, which is probably why it's been voted as one of America's top monuments to visit. Number 6. Giant Sequoia National Monument Situated in the southern Sierra Nevada mountain range in California, the Giant Sequoia National Monument is basically a giant park filled with absolutely massive trees. The monument encompasses 38 of the 39 Giant Sequoia groves in the Sequoia National Forest, which is approximately half of all the Sequoia groves in existence. The trees can live to be 3,000 years old and can grow to be as tall as a 26-story building. One giant sequoia, General Sherman, is the largest living tree by volume and is also the largest living organism on the planet. The tree weighs in at 2.7 million pounds, is 275 feet tall, and is 2100 years old. The monument was created by President Bill Clinton in April of 2000 and is managed by the U.S. Forest Service. Visitors can drive through and visit different parts of the park while seeing some of these beautiful old trees along the way. They can also hike, even with dogs, something restricted to monuments managed by the National Park Service and pitch a tent anywhere they can find a camp. There are also lots of lookouts, rivers, streams, caves, and plenty of other places to snap that perfect picture, which millions of visitors take advantage of each year. The cost is only $30 per car and includes access to Sequoia and Kings Canyons National Parks, which we say is highly worth it. Number 5. John Day Fossil Beds National Monument 
If you're like us, you've probably never heard of this monument, but we're guessing after hearing a little bit about it, you may want to take a short trip out to Oregon to visit it. Like we said, this monument is located in East Central Oregon in Wheeler and Grant counties inside of John Day River Basin. Here, visitors find well-preserved layers of fossil mammals and plants that redesigned the area between five and 45 million years ago. People come from all over the world to hike, camp, fish, mountain bike, and even raft here, all while taking in the incredible scenery that this area has to offer. There are also lots of ranger-guided activities for learning about the geology and history of the monument held throughout the summer. The Thomas Condon Paleontology Center provides plenty of indoor activities for the entire family, including an 18-minute park film, a fossil gallery containing hundreds of fossils, a fossil laboratory, and a junior ranger room for the kids. Sounds like the perfect place to have a relaxing day while enjoying some of the mesmerizing scenery that Oregon has to offer. Number 4. Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument When you hear Mount St. Helens, what do you think? Volcano? Eruption? Those thoughts are precisely why this location in Washington became a national monument in the first place. Following the massive eruption of this volcano in 1980, President Ronald Reagan designated the area as a national monument to allow for research, education, and recreation in 1982. The protected environment has been left to respond naturally to the events that happened on May 18, 1980. People wishing to visit have the opportunity first to explore a visitor center 30 miles from Mount St. Helens itself at Silver Lake, which hosts its fair share of trails and other activities. Inside Mount St. Helens, however, people have a plethora of trails to choose from, information stations to learn at, viewpoints to take in the beauty from, campgrounds to rough it out in, and picnic areas to eat at. Visitors can also drive up to Windy Ridge, which is a mere four miles from the crater of the volcano. Helicopter tours, zip lines, and restaurants are also offered. So it seems like the fun never ends here and more than 500,000 people visit a year. They must be onto something. Number 3. Devil's Tower Located in the Bear Lodge Mountains in Crook County in northwestern Wyoming sits Devil's Tower. It's a Lakothic butte that rises 867 feet from the summit to the base. The giant monument stands above the Belle Forche River and was declared a U.S. national monument in September of 1906 by President Theodore Roosevelt. It received its name by an expedition led by Colonel Richard Irving Dodge in 1875 when his interpreter heard and misinterpreted a native name for the megastructure as Bad God's Tower. Visitors can view the monument from afar, take a guided tour, or if they're adventurous, climb the dang thing. The park is open 24 hours a day, and many choose to view the tower at night. And the park even began offering astronomy programs in the fall of 2017. Devil's Tower has been featured in documentaries, books, and movies alike, and was the location in Close Encounters of the Third Kind where humans made contact with aliens. Number 2. Statue of Liberty Perhaps one of America's well-known monuments is the Statue of Liberty. This massive neoclassical sculpture is found on Liberty Island just off of New York City and was given to the United States as a gift from France. Dedicated on October 28, 1886, the statue has been a hugely popular destination for visitors from all over the world. Ellis Island was also made a part of the Statue of Liberty National Monument in 1965 and hosts a museum of immigration for all to visit. People traveling to see the statue used to be able to access the balcony around on the torch for a magnificent view, but visitors from the public are barred from the balcony and have been since 1916. But that's not to say that there aren't some fantastic things to do at the statue these days, as tourists are taken on the island after paying a small fee, undergoing a security check via ferry, and then are able to see the statue in all of her majesty. People can enter the base of the statue after receiving a free pass alongside their ferry ticket, and some, who must reserve a pass long in advance, can climb the stairs to the crown. Only 240 people are allowed to make that climb every day though, and the ascenders are subject to an additional security screening. They are allowed to bring medication and a camera, but not much else. Although pretty tightly controlled, this monument seems like a pretty great place to spend a day. Number 1. Jefferson National Expansion Memorial This park, located in St. Louis, Missouri, was designated on December 21, 1935, and incorporates the old courthouse, Gateway Arch, and will in the future incorporate a brand new museum. The old museum, the Museum of Westward Expansion, has been done away with to make room for the new project. At the old courthouse, and it is old, seeing as it was built in 1828, visitors can expect to learn about historical court cases, St. Louis's role in settlers' movement into the Western America, and visit a gift shop where there are lots of books, videos, toys, and apparel dedicated to the history of St. Louis. Those who decide to purchase a ticket for the Gateway Arch are in for a real treat. Inside the nation's tallest monument, visitors can climb inside the space-like pod tram alongside others for an exciting and slightly terrifying ascent to the top. 
The pods, or capsules, seat five and tuck you in quite snugly with the other capsule mates. Each capsule has a window so people can see the stairs and inner workings of the arch on their four minute climb to the top. Once at the peak of the arch, they find themselves in an observation area with 32 windows, 16 on each side, that overlook the city of St. Louis on one side and the Mississippi River in Illinois on the other. Everyone is encouraged to stay as long as they'd like and photography is permitted out of the tiny windows, then back into the capsules for the four minute ride back down. While these monuments don't even come close to covering all of the great places that this country has to offer, from the interesting to the incredible, we hope that you enjoyed our list of nine of America's greatest monuments to visit. And if you want to see more lists just like this, be sure to like and subscribe for more content.